there is no shortage of energy on Earth. It falls out of the sky every day. It's abundant, there are no carbon emissions, and all we have to do is gather it up. There's just one little problem. Every night, the shadow of the Earth gets in the way. To capture the energy of the sun, we must get out of the shadow. In deep space, the sun always shines. Solar panels in the proper orbit absorb 10 times the amount of energy than those on the ground, and they do it 24-7. In space where weight is no problem, gossamer thin structures can grow like enormous flower petals, many kilometers on a side. Sunlight gathered by the huge array is converted to a microwave or laser beam, then transmitted to special ground stations on Earth and can provide more than all of our current energy needs. It's a bold idea whose time has finally come. Space-based solar power is an idea that's been around as long as the space program itself. In the early days, visionaries imagined astronauts building structures in space the size of small towns. It was a dream to provide clean, abundant, reliable electricity. Too bad it couldn't be done. At least, not then. The most promising way to get that energy to the ground is a low-intensity microwave beam. But unlike communication satellites, which use one transmitter to send one beam, the solar power satellite beam involves millions of components working together in harmony. It's something like this. Any instrument in the right hands can make beautiful music on its own. When many instruments play at once, the result is noise, unless they're coordinated. That takes a conductor. When the instruments are synchronized, a new sound is produced, a sound that's different from any one instrument. There are also harmonies and overtones that no one is actually playing. They're created by the interaction of all the sound waves blending together. The transmitter of a solar power satellite is made up of many small microwave transmitters, and each one only produces the power of a light bulb. But there are a lot of them, spread out over a very large area. It's called a retrodirective phase array, which simply means the signals from all the transmitters are coordinated like an orchestra to produce a focused, steerable beam. If they all turn on at once or at random, the result would be noise. They need a conductor. The conductor for the solar power satellite is called a pilot beam, and it comes from the ground. The receiving station on the ground shoots the beam up to the satellite, telling the array where to point the beam and synchronize their transmissions. The pilot signal provides a reference that all of the elements of the transmitter can lock onto, bringing them into sync and focusing their energy on the same location. It does this by coordinating the timing of each transmitter so that their radio waves are in phase with each other. This produces constructive interference, so a focused main lobe is created, like harmony in a symphony orchestra. The amazing part of this is that the beam can be steered to a different spot on the ground without any moving parts, and the whole thing happens in milliseconds. And while this beam carries a lot of energy, its intensity is low, because all the transmitters are small and spread over a large area. In fact, the beam is less intense than the signals used for cellular telephones. It poses no threat to life on the ground or in the air. The elements of this type of array have already been demonstrated on Earth, so the technology is there and the physics works. So the next step is to develop a small prototype in low Earth orbit, only a few hundred kilometers up. Here, a satellite continuously passes over the ground, circling the Earth every hour and a half. Keeping the beam focused on a series of targets while moving at high speed would be a true test of the phased array. Then it's a move up to geostationary orbit, where the satellite remains fixed over the same spot on the Earth and can point the beam to different locations on the ground. Doing this efficiently and from a very large satellite that must be as lightweight as possible is the key challenge in the development of solar energy from space. After 50 years of space flight, one thing has become very clear. It's expensive. Every flight of the space shuttle now costs more than $1 billion. 
and the largest space construction project ever undertaken, the International Space Station, will have a price tag of over a hundred billion before it's even begun to do science. And this is small compared to a solar power satellite. But as Bob Dylan said, the times they are a-changing. It will soon be much cheaper to reach space and build things up there. It's still an expensive dream, but the payback from the energy solar power satellites provide will be enormous. Our need to keep ourselves warm, cool, move from place to place, while keeping our electronic gadgets topped up, is straining our energy systems to the limit. And that demand for power is expected to triple by 2100. And even more serious, carbon emissions from fossil fuels are warming the atmosphere of the planet. We need a clean energy alternative to avoid further climate change. There is some effort to reduce our fossil fuel use. Gas tanks are being replaced with electric plugs. But all those batteries in electric cars need to be charged, which will place even further demand on the electric grid. A lot of hope has been placed in conservation, wind, solar and biofuels. But they're not enough. As long as these are on the ground where the wind doesn't always blow and the sun doesn't always shine, they will never produce more than a quarter of our total energy needs. The clean answer, the true alternative source of energy, hangs over our heads, and a new breed of spacefarers will help bring it down to Earth. The elements of space-based solar power are now coming together. Private rocket companies are designing unmanned space vehicles at one-tenth the cost of current systems. Thanks to microelectronics and miniaturized motors, structures in space can assemble themselves. Astronauts are no longer necessary for construction. A solar power satellite can virtually build itself. And when it comes to robots, Canada builds the best. Canadarm 1 and 2, Dexter, as well as a host of other robotic technologies, will change the way construction work is carried out in space. The scale of this project is greater than any space program in history. Which countries will join together and be the first to move forward in this bold initiative? How will the public be reassured that a microwave or a laser beam shining down from space will be safe? Where will the ground stations be located? What about security? The challenges for space-based solar power are still tremendous, but the benefits to humanity are even greater. The time is now to make solar power from space a reality. <laughs>